All right, so this is Stephen Sloan. The date is December 21st, 2015. I'm with uh, Nazma Abduhalik, uh, and we are uh, in Houston, Texas, and this is an interview with the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission's Survivors of Genocide Project. Thank you, Nazma, for sitting down with us today. You're welcome. Um, I know that you uh, shared earlier that you are from Western Darfur, that, that's where you grew up, and yeah. I know you were very young um, at the beginning of the story, but I'd like to start with some of your earliest memories of life in Darfur. Okay. Uh, before the war started, I remember that was my first week of the school, I started like a pre-K. So I started going to school like about a week, and I remember how the class looked. We were like under the tree, the class of the pre K and other classes they have like a room so we just stay under the tree. You know, we like we have a teacher, um, she's wearing white dress with the white shoes on. Um, and then we get out at around ten fifty to go get a lunch at home because we don't have a lunch at the school. Yes, you have to walk at home, like maybe one mile, two miles, depends how far your home is. And then we're gonna go back, like, if you're late, then this just, sure um, the school has to, like, give you some attention or they have to hit you, or they have to put your hands out, or they can hit you in your home with the rules. With the girl, they hit with the rules. Mm. And then the life was so good until we have our holiday name, Eat. We have a Eat day, I think, before the word start. And then I remember all the girls, they, they wear jewelry with their clothes, I have it like designer, and they put many on the hair. They many, like the hairstyle, they have like three kind of, they coming out the long cornbread. And they put many, like three minutes over here, three minutes here with the pants. Mm. And they were dancing, uh, our tribe dance is called Kasak. I mean, and we're not allowed to go there because we're younger, they tell us like, go out, you know how to see us, the way we dance. So we have to dance around, and we gotta just stand far away watching them. So. And what, and what tribal group are you from? What tribe? What tribe were you in? Four. The four. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and then uh, we have like we celebrate our eat like seven days, mm -hmm. and we like some people they pay money, and then we buy food together. We eat like we spend uh, seven days out of the home, like we just like enjoying our life. So when the, the 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 holiday is over, the war started. I, it was Thursday afternoon because I remember I come from back from school. So I come home with my uh, two brothers. One is uh, Khalid, and the other one is Abdurazik. He was four years old, and the other was um, uh, three years old. The one is like youngest one. He wasn't even sitting up yet. And then my mom, she went with a cow, but we used to have a cow. So nobody was at home. So I come home, I tried to change my clothes, and then my brother, he took our donkey, he went to, to, to the farm. We have farm, they have mangoes and different type of fruit, so he went there to see. And then I suddenly hear the gunshots. I just got out, you know, we have the house, it's not like this house is kind of different. So I just hear the gunshot, I get out, and I have my little brother. So I was just carrying him on my hand. And then I hear the gunshot from the west, and then I hear from the nose, and then I hear from his ears again. And then I just said, uh, maybe just people playing with uh, fire, fireworks. Because in Africa, the people making fireworks with the rocks, you know? So it's still like coming more and more. And then I saw people running. People just they're running everywhere something they just wake up from the nap and some kid they like yeah they're just running and I don't know where they're going so some lady tell me you have to run the war is camp and I said what do you mean the war has camp he said where's your mom I said I don't know where's my mom he said you have to run so my brother the one he's four years old he came back with a donkey he packed some clothes he just packed he doesn't know it's my mom clothes or my or he just packed them but we didn't have time to pack. He just left every, like, the things he was packing, he left it. So they read the donkey, and I just grabbed my brother because he couldn't ride the donkey, he was too young, so I have to carry him. We keep walking, and then I just, I, 
I thought, where are we going to go? Because we don't know where we're going to head. And then I have my aunt. Her name is, uh, we call her Tabister. So she just gave her birth like a week ago. She's in the home because she would just tell us, let's walk. I mean, she was in pain, sure, because she just gave her birth. So we just keep walking, but we separate from her. So we have a, a little mountain. And then we keep walking, walking, and the people running. We just keep walking. We don't know where we're going. We're just heading anywhere we have to go. And then we keep walking like for two days. I just turn around, all I see was fire. Nothing else was just fire. The houses, everything was burning up. So we just keep going, keep going in the middle of nowhere. No mother, no father, we just keep going. So we went somewhere, there's not even water or food, just trees and you know, sun, mm -hmm. there's nothing on and and the donkey can go up to the mountain. We just left the donkey down there. And then we saw in a helicopter, it was green with um, green and, and, and white hands. Mm -hmm. And then um, this group, uh, the government militias named, we call them Jinjoid, and some of them they were not Jinjoid, there was some government people just killing people everywhere. So they came with uh, cars in the back, like a southway with the cars, and some of them with the uh, camels, and helicopter shooting people from up to down. Uh, and then people kept running, hiding under the trees, hiding under the rocks. And, and for the ones who they don't have their mothers, or they already lost them, but which they didn't know, they just keep hiding. And suddenly then, we just find a little like, the, the river, the when the water's gone, we just like hide in there, but it's still not safe because they're just coming. They don't want to stop. They keep shooting and shooting everywhere. And then what happened, we we find somebody, my father's younger brothers. His name his name was Usman. He hold my hand and he hold my little brother. He put him on his shoulder. He like uh, rub him with some scarf, so we just keep walking. And then he said, let's go this way. He was climbing up the mountain. So we were climbing, we thought we were gonna be safe, but he was the oldest one. He was like 20 years old. So they shot him in his head right here. And he fell, I have no idea. He just fell, his, he was like, the blood's coming from his mouth. And he said, run. He said, take your brothers out of here, run. As, and I, I didn't talk, I couldn't say anything. And he's just like, say, just run. So I kept run up to the mountain. And then I just like saw him. He just, he dropped his head and everything. He just was gone. So we kept running. We just going anywhere. We didn't know what direction we are. We just running. Forest is going through a forest and mountain. And then my shoes, I lost them. Because there's no way you can like look back to grab something. The clothes we were wearing, they were the last ones. Mm -hmm. So we kept running for months. No water, not clean. Well, we have water from the rivers, but not clean or healthy. So we kept running, running for months. After two months later, I don't know, even two months, we just been for a long time. There was no food, there was no water. Again, they came again back. They. Uh, they keep shooting people, killing men, slapping them in front of children. And their boys, they have to kill them. If the girl age of 14, they have to attack them or they have to rape them in front of their parents. If you're a man, they have to kill you. And you don't have to say, if your wife, they have to rape her of you. You talk, that, they keep saying that you're nobody, they're cursing people. I mean, which I don't speak Arabic, but when, I don't know, that when I asked around, that I, I knew, but, so, and then, and then what happened, we kept running, running, we made, suddenly, we were just turned to a fight, we made with my mom, after a while, like, I don't know, for how many days or months, we, we made with her, she was just going in different direction, we come in different direction, we just crossed each other. She couldn't organize us because somebody told her we're already dead. 
I, I didn't say, Mom, is that you? She said, who are you? Like, her head was gone. She said, my kids, they were dead. Because she was with the cops already. Mm -hmm. So, and then I said, this is us, and this is your little baby, Hamoudi. And he said, I have no kid. Like, she lost her head completely. She, her face turned white, like, she couldn't, there was no food or everything. She don't care about food, she just care about her kid, which people tell her they already dead because there was nobody was there. And then we just followed her a little by little. She organized us and until today she still, her hair is not back to the right normal. And then we kept going with my parents to the different, like different kind of villages. We just keep going forward, forward until we went to the place they were just surrounded by mountains there's no other way out the only you see is the snakes and different kind of uh, animals or just trees there's nothing else so we spent there like i don't know how many days because i can account them we only worry if you can be safe and you cannot sleep you keep walking if you want to take a break you only sit for a few minutes so you can move forward. We kept running and running. And then we just went back to some village, which is not our home anymore, just some of them. So we head in different direction. We went to this place called Zare. It's before my heart. Um, it's far away, I don't even know. We went there, we met with my dad, which he has been already shot. He was just lying down under the trees with some of his friends or just people he met up there from the war. Yes. So he was just shot from his back and then he was allowed to walk or crawl. He was just lying there. So he got better little by little. So we went up to the mountain called, um, I don't really remember the name, but it was just a dangerous mountain people didn't go mm -hmm. to it because they said there's a lot of different anime eating people. So we went there, we spent there like about four months with no good water or food. Well, only like some people eat the leaf of the tree, some people they eat like them. Some trees they have a fruit. They eat them, you don't know if it's a poison or not poison. So we spent there for four months if you saw the the cow you have to like you know slide them and eat them or just drink the water which is not clean and then we spend there about like four months we have a little with little chip we just found on our way so we he like she grow a little bit after the end we we have to eat her because it's not good to eat and it was so hard to eat you know animal that you grow yeah we have no choice. We just ate it and and then was uh, in the night time, I don't know what time was that, the war came again. This is like a mountain. The the, the government of the the government they was like here and here like they surrounded the mountain. It was in the night time. They were wearing all the clothes were the the, the, the grid. You couldn't see their face. It was like a night. And then they start shooting. And the helicopter again is looking people down, shooting. So they shoot people. We have nowhere else to go, they catch us. They, many people died that day. I don't even know what day was that. Many of them died. And I saw my father was his brother named uh, Isa. They were running. He has some tobacco. I think he dropped my little brother to pick it up. His name is Abdurrahman. He picked him, and then the, the 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 soldiers of the government he shot the rock, and the rock hit my brother. He fall and he hit his knee on on the rock. So he's not even walking away in, until now. So and then they shot my dad again on his back, and his his younger brother they shot him here. His name is Isa. They shot him in his shoulder. They just keep running and running. So they saw some like some hiding space on the, on the rock between rocks, and so they get in. They were hiding there, and then we put some leaves because they made it, We know if they catch them, they're gonna die. And then they shot a lot of men, and they would keep asking people, "Where's the men? Where's the men? Where's the boys? If you you have a son, they have to kill him. If you have a 
husband they're gonna kill her. If you have a daughter like a teenager, they're gonna rape her or they're gonna just take her away. And you, ha you can't talk. If you talk, you're dead. And some militias, they have swords. Not all of them are guns, they have swords. And remember the swords kind of brown and here it's kind of like white with the brown hood. And one of them asked my mom, he said, go, can you go from the other side? My mom said, I can't go, I have my baby. And he said, if you're not going, I'm gonna shake your head off. And there was a little tree, he, uh, he was like shaking on the little tree. He said, you see this tree, I'm gonna do that to you. So, and then he grew up and as a lady, she was um, she was young girl. The girl her she was she went to the I don't know she went somewhere and the first is they just raped her and then they killed her. And then they just took many girls and whatever you wanting, they're gonna take it away from you. So what happened on that day? The people you knew, they were they're gonna you just see them dying from you and you can you can do nothing to stop that. Because if you're trying to, to do something, it's going to be your dead and they're going to be dead, the same people. So you always, what you're going to do is just try to save your life. And whatever you do is going to get you killed. You only have to just pick up your hands and stop. And then what happened, some people escape, you try to escape, they shoot at you. Or they just have to like cut you with a, with a sword. They don't care. And then it was like all day long they we just sitting there and they were like surround us and then they whisper and they talk and then they they, they grab ladies, they I don't know where they take it there and some girls they take it there and she say, I'm not going, they're gonna kill you. Or you have no choice because they don't even know what is your language, they just talk in Arabic and some people they just have language, I don't know what they are. So we went, so we went up to the mountain again, we escaped with my mom. It was like, this mountain is like this, it has some cover with a rug on the top. So we went there, we thought we, got, we were safe, but we weren't safe. They catch us again. And then the guy said to my mom, can you go with me? And my mom said, where? Like, they didn't like ask her in a polite way. You know, they just said, you have to go, or I'm going to kill you. My mom said, kill me. And then, like someone hit her on her knee with a sword, like she, he, they just hit her like tilted her like his, his knee still like she's not going straight. And then she pretended like she's dead, but she's not dead. I mean, she was like sleeping there for a while because, I don't know, maybe she, she just pain or something. I don't know, but like when they hit her, she fell, like she just went down with her and then she fell. So, and then, the people that. Other people we met from they were from different villages. They were there. Some of them they're dead, and some of them they just left a little babies. Baby was out of their mother. They cry, and there's so many of them. You don't know which one you have to pick, and they're charging it for the little ones. I don't know what kind of people they are. If they're poor, they have to kill her. It's just so sad. You're just killing a little baby, and if you're a girl, they're gonna just leave her there. And they, they ask the pregnant woman, are you, is your baby boy or a girl? They said, we don't know. And they have to charge the lady. And then, well, I have my two brothers, they were three. I have to like, have, I, I wasn't wearing my scarf because I was very young, so my mom, she just rubbed them this scarf on their back so they kind of tell the difference if they're boys or girls. That's how they, they were safe. And then my dad, and his brother was separate from there again for two years. They went this place called Sinda. Well, didn't, we didn't go there because we have nowhere because they catch us already. They went to Sinda, but we were in the mountain. We didn't eat for a week, no food, because the, the government people, they catch us. They didn't give us no food, no water. You, you can't even pee. There's no space for you. If you're trying to do something, they're shooting you. They're charging people. And they just like, some of them, they just pick him like a, a hand, they shoot it, and they're like gonna throw it up the hand and they shoot it at it. And if you look at them, they say, why are you looking at me? They say, that's the respect for you, should respect me. They say, you're nothing. 
they said this island is not yours. They tell the people that this island like, you're not supposed to have this life. So on some of them, they cutting down the trees. Some of them, they climb on the trees. They're looking at the people and they sh uh, they run and they shoot on the people. Also as well, and they started the after shooting people down. But there some of them they climbed up the trees and shooting people down. And then it was the night. We we just walked. We didn't know where we were going. We went. <coughs> Excuse me. We walk. We come. We just like walking anywhere. We don't know what direction we're going because we don't know. We don't have math. So we just walking for many days. Uh, we use the rug and the pinch of trees. The hard rugs you have to walk through it. You have no choice. You have to walk, and sometimes you have to crawl because if you walk, stand, they're gonna see you. When they see you, you know that you're dead. You have to walk through the hard rocks. You have to crawl through, it and your your feet they are already swollen, they're bleeding. But you have no choice. You have to do it, or otherwise you're dead. You're thirsty. Your mouth was so dry. You can't even think it's like a human being body. Everything just turned white. And and then what happened? We just keep walking within the hard rock, and you have to climb to the mountains. The clothes what we have it was just wrapped up. Everything was just no. Nah. We just like you know you can't even describe this as a good clothes. We go, we we don't take showers, no food, nothing. You just have to worry if you're gonna be alive or not. Or we survive. We thought we're gonna be safe. We could walk into the hard rock until we went back to the villages. We go in village to village, walk it. It's just a little road we keep walking through. Every time you see, just people die. All the way you look, there's somebody dead or animals. Just like animals lying down. And then we went to drain water. And at first we had some kank. We went, I went to take the water and then I saw dead people inside the water. But we have no choice. We have to drink that water. Was if you don't drink, otherwise you have to die. So we drink the water. I know it's a smell and it's bloody, but we have to drink it. So when we drink the water, we just said a little bit, they came. They took little boys, they just drop it inside the water. I don't know why they did that. And then they said, you have no land, we can do whatever we want to do. And if you try to ask them or you're trying to be smart or you want to know everything, they just have to like cut your head with a sword. They said it's too easy to die with a gun. And then if you demand something, they're wearing this car. And then we have the long scar that we want to cut top. They were wearing them because they tried to like to, to, to be safe from them. But it was not too long. It wasn't for too long. They discovered them because they were charging. They, they found out they were men. They took them. I don't know where they took them. So from that place, we went somewhere. We went back to our village for a long, one distance. And then. Uh, I just look and I said, Mom, isn't that our home? She said, keep it down. And then why do they know why that was our home? Because there was a big tree started by our home. But everything else was gone. It was only trees. The houses we built for many years for our ground, they were all burned down. And then and I asked my mom, where the houses go? Where's the, the pieces of it? Everything was gone down. So. Are in the neighborhood and I just run to the home where I used to be in my room and I saw a big hole. I just put my leg like this. Every all the, the rock was a big rock, it went in. It was a big hole. As long as you step in, it's, it's crazy in. So my mom she pulled me out. And then she said, Keep it down. We keep walking. In the night time we snatches and there's a big like they, they cut down the trees. You have to walk through them. We walked through them. And there was some, we come, there's a rebels. You have, yeah. you have to just go through the rebels too. I mean, there's a snake and there's the frogs. It's, if you're scared of them, you have to go. There's no way to fear. You have to face your fears on that day. We keep walking. We was like close to Zelinga. Uh, and then 
there was a lot of people. I thought they were female, but there wasn't female. There was just a male who looked like a female throughout the stadium. Man. So we just like, it's like we just stayed here for the sun to come to rise. And then they saw them, they run, and then we saw the, the light come far away from the mountain. And they just took all the men, all of them, even the young boys, they just took them. There's this white sound. It was hot, and then they rubbed their hair with a red, red kind of scarf. I don't know what the scarf, so they took them all their clothes down. They just like, all they stand the lines like this. And they, they have a fire, they put the metals and they torture them. Or some of them, they just like, stand like this, they just shoot them through them, one by one. And you cannot cry, there's no tears coming. And I never saw my tears come from that day. Because when I see that, my hair just came on strong and strong. And then again, I know this guy, he's, um, he married to my aunt. He has all in one son. They capture him, and then they just like cut his skin out. And this guy, he just speak it up, he's crazy. And some of them, they were just shooting him with a the gun. They say, if I shoot you with a gun, it's easy to die. They torture him. And then we went to this place called Zaringa. Some people, they made a new home, like I came with a leaf. We thought we were safe there. And then we were just, no food. Yeah, we have water because like in that part there's a water. You just have to like dig the hole and the water's coming, which is not clean, but you have to drink it. You have no choice, no food. Maybe we have, you have to go find it, the fruit from the trees. You don't know if it's poison or not poison. We have to eat that to survive. And there's no place to take shower because you don't think this is safe. We build a house, not a house, but like a, with a leaf, a new home. We spent there for a couple of months, and then the government, Malaysia, they came charging for people again. They took the girls, they raped them, they killed the females, the one who trying to to say that enough, gosh, you kill us, you know, you killed the last one and everything. You say that, they're killing you. They say you're not a human being. They're just saying anything, they say this island is not yours, it doesn't belong to you. And when you say it's blunt to me, you're dead. Because they say you're nothing to talk back to me. And then they chose the people and they took them in, they killed them. And then my father, he was left behind. He was just still in the war. We don't know if he was dead. We thought he was dead. Because we, we already saw him touch, shot twice. And then they, they got, the militia, they know my father, they hear the name Abdul Khali, they came charging for us. But they don't know who we are. But they pay people, they say, if you find these people, he gonna give you this, which they lied to you. You bring them, they gonna kill you as well, and they take their permission to use it. So we went there, and then my mom, she get very sick, she couldn't wake up for weeks, she would just sleep. And and I don't understand why she couldn't wake up. She was just living sick and her bed was swelling all over swelling. I thought maybe she dead or something. And after a few months later, uh, after weeks later, she just wake up and she was like, her face was so white and was so dry. And she couldn't, she opened her eyes, but you can't tell if it was open because her bed was swelling. And then, this, I don't know, this, some people came, they give us some food. I don't know if they're from New York or somewhere, they give them food. After a while, you know, they cut off the food. The Malaysian people, they stopped them. So they stopped them. And some people, they want to go work outside because they, we come to a um, different city, like it's a city, Zaling is a big city. They want to work. If you're going to work, they say, oh, these people, they come from the work. They killing them if you want to work at home. Or they just have to do terrible things to you that you never seen in your life. So we get out of there. We we went to sh uh, we went to uh, this place, the other city from Sudan called Kinana. We went there because my f mom father, he lived there. But my mom she didn't grow up with her father. She grew up with the, his um, a father brother. He was killed during the war too. So when they we spend like a year, 
the Red Cross camp. He came and then I was just playing outside. And then he came here, he said, are you Nasma, Abdullah, Abdul Khalid? But my grandfather warned me not to say to anybody, uh, to anybody my name. And I said, I didn't say nothing, I didn't speak Arabic. I was in, 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 in Canada, I really speak Arabic, I wasn't, I would only speak my language. I don't know what to say. He showed me my father's picture. And then I told I, I told I, I told him I spoke my language, so he was crying. I said he was dead, and then say your father and shot. I hear the name shot, but I don't know what was that. Because when I was young, I never hear. I don't know what is it's out just any country beside my hometown. And then he said, "Can you come with us with the white car?" I didn't drive because my mom wasn't at home. I was only again with my two brothers and little one. He was sleeping. I said we don't know, so he put a, he make a phone call and shot. But my father he was sick. I talked to him and then I believed him. And then he and then they said, "Guys, you have to get out of here." A week later, the people came. I don't know. They like uh, they look like Arabic. They have a long hair. They have mark here, and they just start asking my questions. And then they tried. To, to kill my my um, my mom brother, and but he was a citizen of Sudan. They didn't ask him because he's not he doesn't live in the airport, so that's a different state. Mm -hmm. And then we left. We the, my father, my grandfather. He mm -hmm. found a little local car. It's not even good car. We just rode the car. We went back. We went back to Darfur where we come from. So we went back to Darfur. We said we went to. Uh, Nyala. So when before we go to Nyala, there's a very big distance. I got sick. I was bleeding. I I don't know why I was sick or everything. I just got sick. My face turned purple. And I was just bleeding with my nose. I couldn't eat or anything. So and the car stopped. The agent stopped in the middle of nowhere. And there's not food. It was water. This yeah, water is everywhere, but dirty water. You have to drink it. So and there's no medication for me or for whoever was sick. And then everyone thought they're gonna leave me in the middle of nowhere because they thought I was there because I was bleeding. I was just bleeding and there's no way to stop the bleeding. And then the agent sent me out of where there was trees, you know, at tamarind trees. Mm -hmm. So people were eating tamarind trees and the tamarinds and everything. And then there was people, I was sick, but I was awake. And then the people come there, well, they have a big muscles, they have a long hair, and they have a gun, they like holding their gun like this. All their clothes, they wear a grip. And then they were just charging people, there's a man, they say, get up, come here. And they're just gonna shoot him. They don't shoot him. They, if they shoot you from your head or just right in your heart. They just shooting him. Are you trying to look at them? They said, come here, they're charging women everywhere. You have good clothes or jewelry, they just take it away from you. So we spent there in the car agent, nobody worked it out through, we spent there and then the, um, the driver, he was Arabic, but he couldn't hurt her because he was working for the money. And then they killed many people, and some people that were from my town, we just met again. Some of them they were killed, and some of them they just I don't know where they got. And then what happened? There was like in Africa we don't have like uh, the the roads clean like here, but there was the water. The car increased inside the water. Some some people, the women, they have fish the car to go out. Some the they can't fish because they're pregnant, so they took the car out. I don't know somehow. And then we were going somewhere again, a little distant. Another militia people came. They captured the, the car. They took the ladies to 14 years old or 10. They just see your girl or a little girl up, they're taking you. Or if you see your boy, they're taking you. And then they they, they stop the cars, you know, with a sword, they stop the car and see who's looking at them or everything. So if you were very quiet, they just leave it. In. And there was somebody, I was sick lying down on the car, and they, somebody was sitting there, they just stopped him, and he died. That's only me. 
And then I was getting better a little by little. I mean, even though you're still sick, but I was getting better. I, but I wasn't, I was not able to sit down. My hair was so dizzy. And then we get out of that horrible place. We went in this thing again. It's ginger, it. They came to surround my car. Wherever you were, and they taken away from you. And what if you have money, when you don't give them something, they kill you. I mean, you have no choice. You just have to give them whatever you have. It's not up to you. They're gonna take it away from you. They're gonna force you to do whatever they want you to do. From that time, we went back to Nyala, which is not like the, the village of Nyala went there. They put us in the row, like, you know, the train row, they drop us there. The train, is, when the train comes, they don't stop. Some people just get it, the train just goes through it, but they die in it. I don't know why, I just run, I, I jump there, the train, like, it's just two lines, you know? Mm -hmm. I pass that one, and the yard, they have a new camps. Like the UN camp, they give them food and they give them everything. Refugee camp. Refugee camp, yeah. yes. Went there, but, and then when there was too late. We met some, uh, my mom's uh, cousins. We went there, we spent like a, a week from their houses, but we went out. Because my father was looking for us, we have to go to chat. Wasn't safe enough for us. So, we, we didn't have no money, nothing. So. People also they don't have money. They just like everybody give us like penny or twenty dollar, or they have to sell their food that the UN give to them so they can get out of there. So we got another car. We went back to Darfur. We went to this I don't know uh, the place the the, the very name. We were going back, and then the car stopped in the middle of the road. There was ginger over here, there was ginger over here. They cutting the trees down, you know, the mango trees. The apple trees, the banana trees, they were cutting them down. And they killing people, you shouldn't... For me, the shooting came normal to me. The death came normal to me, I wasn't that scared anymore. I see people dead, it wasn't like anything because I just like... I been there in the death situation for a long time. I see somebody dead. Oh, I just say, oh, and I didn't say nothing, I'm just silent, but it was just not scary anymore. And then, and then I saw this little Arabic kid, he wasn't even 18, he just like had a gun. He just walking and killing people, pointing his gun to people. And I don't understand why they just a young boy have a gun killing people at that age. And then we went to al Fashion. Because you had to go to Fajr before you went back to home. When you're a Fajr, I saw the the orange. You see the orange flowers with the green is like a, the leaf is green and um, the, the orange is 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 uh, yellow. You can see them far away. You can see them. Right? And then I saw we come back home, but it wasn't my home. It was a different. Uh, Al Fajr is the the, the big. Uh, capital of Darfur. When there, there's a space between Nyertete with the father, the car stopped. There was two cars. One was the man, they said, come here, the war is coming. People went, they believed them, but they were the, the, the militia government. They, all the men they went, they said, we're gonna save you. When they gonna draw the bomb inside the car. They all gone. They believe in them. So we, we just ran to the forest again because we were in a different way. We just walked to the nursery to our, we just walked and walked again. When we walked, we met with Arab people. And there's some ladies, they're just, just not close anymore. They just, just walked through. There's no food. You're, you're sick, you're bleeding through, but you have to walk, there's no way to stop. So we went to Nyerthele, just uh, Nyerthele is the, uh, the place called Dlaid. We went to Dlaid, we spent a couple of, uh, like a days, it's not like a week. Somebody like invited us to the restaurant because we're just not city people. we just like, we come from the, you know, from the people who live in the forests. They give us food, we ate and everything. But when I went, you have to get out of the restaurant. We, there's no way to go. Yeah, the lights everywhere, people houses go, but 
do it who you know to go no we keep walking the people who drive in car they don't even tell you i'm coming they're just going through you they don't respect you we keep go walking from the lake we went to zalinga zalinga is, is close to us but we walk there zalinga we went there we find like our relative the UN already give them food and they have not good houses, you know, they build with the trees, leaves. We spent a couple of months, but our some relatives that we grew up with, they were in different refugee camps. We went there, we spent like um, two weeks. We got out, we, we rode a car. The car was, you know, you know, African cars, they have the leaves on the side, so you have to ride that one, they put everything. We went. This before each other there's a place called uh, Morne or I don't remember the, the place name exactly. We went there again the, the malicious. They came the cautious the the car. If you're a man, I mean there's people from different uh, villages in that was a big country though. Mm -hmm. If you're a man get out and you're a girl looking girl, they're taking you or they rape you and then they were just Somebody stopped the tire of the car. They said, nobody pay you. If you don't pay the price, you would not go anywhere. So what happened? Everybody was just got off the line, so we have to stand the line. So we were the first people to get out of the line. They were too busy checking the cars. We just came, and then we went to the forest. We were running, running, running. And then my mom, she couldn't walk anymore. I mean, and then I saw my mom, you know, we cannot, you, you just come from a long way. It's, this is too close. It's almost over. You just have to, she start crawling. And we have to crawl because if you walk, stand up, they will shoot you. But they're going to shoot you. There's no doubt. And you know, that's right. They're going to shoot you. We're crawling, crawling. There was the rocks, everything. It's no, you, you don't have to worry about that. You just going. We keep going, keep going. Then we went too far. It was dirt and a little rock. It's very hot during the daytime. And we were thirsty and we were like starving. We just keep going. You just walk like uh, if you watch the movie, the dead man walking. And we just keep walking and then everyone was just pain in, in the sun. And we just keep it, we slept there, I don't know, until the, the night came, we wake up and keep walking, walking. And then we went to the road, that we saw another car camp. We saw the car, my mom begged that guy to give us a ride. He gave us a ride. And then he said, what is my price? He said, can you give me my daughter? I mean, he said, give, can you kind of have your daughter if, you, if I give you this ride? And my dad said, uh, my mom said, I cannot give you my daughter. He said, I mean, you have a choice? I'm not asking if you want, I can take her anyway. And I just, but if you can you had to go, I'm happy to die here, but I'm not going to it was you. And I didn't say, well, who the hell are you? I said, I'm just me. I have no name, I'm just me. And then he just loved me. I, I didn't do nothing, I just stand and walk. I said, Mom, let's go. So we went, and then we saw somewhere else with a car, he has people. And there was like um, dead animals in the car, so we ride that car with dead animals. I mean, there was things, but we have to ride it. And then we asked for them to give us, these two people in the car, one is the driver, one is the passenger. We asked the passenger to give us the water. He said, isn't that water to put in front of you? I said, which one? He said, the dead animal. And then I said, are you a human being or you just, you know, a hyena or something? And then he stopped the car, he came, he said, who was talking? I said, I don't know who was talking. And then he tried to hit my mom, and then I said, you can hit me, I have no problem with that. And he slapped me, he dragged me, he put me down there. And then I didn't even cry, I didn't think, that maybe he thought he could, I could cry, but then he went like to a distance, I mean, he was just walking. And then, they took my mom to the chat. We already went to chat. And then what happened? I was down with some other guy. He came to me through a car. He just put me back where my parents they were with the dead animals, you know? Mm -hmm. And my brother was now where I went to chat. You know, the border between Chad and Sudan, it's not really good. It's terrible, too. Because 
the the militia they're there the most they, they just started by the they by the border because they know people are gonna come and then they shoot people the the driver who accepts to take people they're gonna capture them or they're gonna just say give me your money or something and they say they you're gonna see them talking a lot a lot and they spend all the day or too long until the driver has to come back so I don't know what happened. If you have everything, they're gonna bring kind of big bag and say, whatever you have, it's carb, everything, put it in. If you don't put it in, they, they're gonna slob you so hard with the sore, bag of the sore, or some people, they cut in their ears. And if you cry, they say, why are you crying? You're still alive. I mean, you're suffering. It does not, that's alive, but you're suffering still. Because your brain doesn't mean that's alive. And then, we run another car. We run another car with many people, a um, different lady with their kid. Kid, they were crying. Children, they can't cause there's enough for their water. And then finally, we got to the shot. We found a little, little like it's not. It's like a. Uh, they built some kind of. It's not a room. But it's not a room we call it rako, but in my language, like with the grass and everything. We went there, we sat on it, we found a little, like, it's like this car, and they has a little water, we drink water, we have to sip the water. Because we don't know what's gonna happen, if you drink a lot of water, you're gonna run. So we have to sip a little water, and then we have to walk. This uh, refugee camp is called Arriba Saba. We went there, but my father's not there, he's somewhere else. From Arriba Saba, there was that foreign people come from different villages. The UN give them food and everything, and they give them camps. Like a really camp, they give them the camps, and they give them stuff to cook with the items and some clothes. And then finally, their life was kind of good, better than where we come from. And then we have to go for we have to go see our dad. Well, my dad, he wasn't able to walk or everything was just lying but he was still asking for everything doctor I said he had to say I need my children I need everything but he was there with my stepmother her name is Asha and then we we have to walk from our neighbor to goes better like a weeks you have to just walk the sun the shot is desert there's no water in shot there's not even a trees all the trees this is a dry tree standing up there my little brother, I thought he was gonna die because she was he wasn't even sitting up, but he survived. We all survived somehow. We went to the girls' better. We went. All we see was the graves of people. And then I said, "My dad lives in the graves." I asked my mom. I said, "No." So because every time we go, we ask somebody, "Where's this uh, refugee camp called? Goes better? Where is it?" They say, "Just keep going. Maybe a week you can go if you wanna get there." So we keep going, going, thirsty, starving. We keep going until like some, we just like, we take two days off. We wait under the trees. We slept there on the grass. Um, there's no blanket, you know, we we'll have a cloth. So we were there, we were like, we find somebody with a donkey. He gave my mom a ride because my mom, she wasn't able to walk her. She like, her body just retired. But you know, we just, I know my body was bleeding and I was swelling and everything, but I was able to walk a little, I was better than her. So we went to, they have a little market refugees, they have a new life, finally, but still, they lost their loved ones, everything. We went there, they put us in the market. We asked, you know, Abdullah, Abdul Khali? They say, that guy, People say maybe he will die tomorrow or today. You looking for him? He said, if you don't hurry, you will not find him alive. Okay. We just said there's some people we don't know he he has some restaurant or I don't know what he has. He give us water, he give us food, and he give us some fruit. We ate and he took us to our dad. Okay, we have to walk. It was very hot. The sun was so hot. We have no shoes or anything. We just walk it. We went, like a literally said, we saw a camp, there were white camps. You can't see them, but the line was so many of them. 
We went there, what I saw, there was so many people, different kind of tribes. We went there, it was, there was, they just, they have school, and they have food from the new end people. And then we went there, we just like, we saw the camp, and my ma my, my stepmother, they have two camps, they give us one, and then they took one, and then, and then I said, where's my dad? He said, y your dad? A doctor said, maybe he's dead, I wouldn't know. I said, can you take us to, uh, to him? He said, sure, then she, we went to the hospital, where they call coffee, coffee service in the French. I don't remember the exact name, so I went to my dad. We found him, he was so tiny and just like his face was so wide and he wasn't even able to open his eyes and they were just feeding him with a spoon and everything. What is the liquid? He kind of ate no food. So we went there, he smiled and everything we saw him. And so I hugged him and said, so I thought you were dead. I said, I thought you were all dead. So we reduced all together as a family, and then we went to UN people, register our name. They give us a car, like, it's kind of green, or green with blue. They it had a photo or the fingerprint of the, all the family. They put all my father's name. So you have to wait, like, you have to wait like a week so they can update your name and everything. They, they start giving us food, like sugar, everything. They give take him, so. We spent, we, I, we just have a better life, even though we know everything was gone, but it was better than where we come from during the war. We have a clear water, but you have to fight for the water now. This is a long line. You have to like go three in the morning to stand in line to get the water. Even though still you don't go, people still keeping on fighting for the water. The water is not all the time, it has time, the limited time. For all that people who come from different villages that speak different kind of languages, one or uh, two hours is not enough for them. And everybody needs to get water. So people have to fight, some people are getting injured, some people are getting killed from the fight, they're pushing them. I have to get inside the line to get water for my parents because my dad is sick, my my mom is sick, my, my little brother, they can't, I have no choice how to get. I was pushed out to get full and get a full and get them until I have to get the water. Even if I get the water, I'm not able to carry it. I just have to like pour in the little thing and then I have to take it home and come back. And if I left it there, somebody's gonna take it. So I just have to push it, push it until I go home, but it's too far. Well, we spend there like an year and a half. These people are it's an international card people camp. They talk to my mom and my dad. Couple of, like couple of months, they just keep coming and talking to my mom and doing everything. So I said, we're gonna move you to United States. So they say this is they call um, is is C C C C what is ICE and C I like international card right? I C I C yeah. So. And then they register our name and everything. My mom, she passed the, uh, the interview. And then we moved. They tell they're going to take us to United States. They give us a clothes and everything. We, we, went, we went to different, everyone was to different camps. Inside a shop, but it was different camp. We went to the girls, but we went to the Gaga. Gaga's hair, but then goes better. We went, they give us a special little place. They make it. It's a big circle around it, and um, we have a camp. They have people come from Arriba Seven, and they come people from Guadalupe, which is us and different family. We sat in there. We thought we're gonna they're gonna take us somewhere safer, better than this. So, but they took us in the worst place again. It's desert. No, not even water. Water is not even clean, and you have to fight for that dirty water. Even if you find the water, you're lucky. Mm -hmm. And then, in the morning when you get up, from the desert where you're gonna see, everything you're gonna see is just the sun on your, on your clothes. All of the things you see cleanse your teeth or your, your eyes. You just look like a dead man or a ghost. 
You can't do nothing. All of your eyes is clean inside your body. We've been there for like a year and a half again. We, and then, of course, they give us food. They give us oil and salt and sugar, everything. But like, you ain't giving us that, all items. And then they move us. So we said, we're going to take you to that. And said, okay, they come it. They take it. More information. And then they, so they move us to the the city of the shadow called in Jamena. So we then they give us they give us a little houses, beautiful. It has three bedroom and it has a big living room. There were, were too many people, not only us. There was many people from different tribes, different villages. They put us all together in three rooms. We have to share. We don't ever have a bed. We have to share the big pillowcase, like the big one. Just sh- over the blanket, you have to share like four people in one blanket. You just have to share. Well, for me, it was better <laughs> than where it came from. They give us free food. They give us lunch, a breakfast, a dinner, everything. But still, you have to share. You know, a bear or a blanket with four people or five. For a, not even a sister, brother, just for different people. And then they separate us again. When we become friends, we we tell the story from different side of the Darfur villages, they separate us again. Some of them, they went to, they took them to different sh- uh, parts of the shell, like uh, they have in Jamena, they went there. And then they moved them to Norway, they moved them to the you know, Washington DC or Seattle or something, we just left behind again. They took us to, from child we went to Ethiopia, we spent like a week. We saw Ethiopia was new, culture, everything, they have a good restaurant, everything. We, they give us, yeah, they give us free, free food and free clothes to change and do that. So what happened? We went to Kiri again. Kiri is a horrible place, I will never go there again mm-hmm. in my life. Then we went to Kenya. The first thing we went for the week, they put us in a beautiful place, free food, free clothes. You take shower with uh, what they call the shower is like it's not like a, our home. It's just the water's coming up. You mm-hmm. take shower every time you want. The water every time you drink, every time you want, and you have your own bed and everything. But the bed they stick together. For your mom is down, your dad is after that, your pa- your brothers after that. You have to keep going. And then, my mom, she was pregnant with other brothers who went to, after the week, they took us to the refugees. They call Kaguma. It's inside the Kenya. We went to that place. There's too many refugees from Somalia, from Sudan. Even the Sudan, they uh, they came before, to, to, uh, like 25 years ago, they came, they still there. From Congo, yeah. they, any of African refugees were there. All of the ever have gone there. Every every refugees they were there. They have camps, so they they put us. They we went there again. There's no way to choose a restroom. Everywhere they you want to pee, everyone can see. You, so you have to wait until the night camp to go pee. They put us there. So oh God, you're gonna be safe and everything. We're gonna come back after seven months. Okay, with that six months we spent, I feel was like many years. So we we went to the camps. We na- they name the, the the area we live in. They call it four four area, and we people were just fighting different tribe. The water again, the water issue. We ha- I had to make the blocks with the. We ha- I had to get the water dirt with my pa- father. My mom, she's pregnant, she can't do anything, so we make the blocks, we uh, make a new home. We create our own home with different designs. It's not even well, but we just did it away so we kind of stay in. So we, 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 me and my dad and my two brothers, I'm the only one who has to go, go get water because my brothers, if they go to the line, they cannot survive. They somebody going to push them to the hole, they're going to die. So I'm the only one who had to go to my dad. He can't go to stand in line because his back was on the shooting. He had to stand for too long. So I have to bring the water. We built my mom home. And then I built, we built ours. My and my brothers, we had three brothers. I mean, actually, we were four, four, there were four brothers. But my mom was pregnant with number five. So 
we my mom she build we build hers and then we build ours, and then we have to build my step uh, mother's home again. We have to make the blocks. The sun is high, but we have to just keep making the blocks more and more and more. So we make it more enough. But still, we make the the, the bottom. We have to do it for the top. It's just much us from the bottom. We have to do it again. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. After that, we finish with it. Well, the home is still look horrible. What I have done, I just created a bed, the rocks bed. I cried my mom. I said, I said my, my dad, I'm not gonna do it again. I'm tired. Who told you to money to your wives? I'm not gonna help you anymore. I'm done. It was my body just? I have no clothes. My last clothes that I'm wearing, they already rough and so dirty and everything. And I have no juice. I'm just walking and my like my body just tired. Like mm-hmm. my, you can't even tell if I'm a human being. Mm-hmm. And my body changed and everything. And then I just. Make like on the side, I make my bed so high with the rocks. I was just sleeping on it there for a couple of months. We have to go to school, which is so I don't understand nothing. We just have to be there. You sleep, you don't feel like you're sleeping. It was as soon as you sleep, you, you blow your eye, the sun is just coming. So you have to get up and go to school. Before that, I have to go stand in line to, to get water. So I can leave some water for my mom and my little brothers who is staying with her at home. To get that water, people fight, they pull in people's hair, and, and then you have to just go through And sometimes you have to you try to defend somebody or you try to get between them. You know who's going to get hit. So we've been there like for five months. My aunt, she was pregnant with her daughter. Now she's like five years old. And then she was behind me in line, and then she was pregnant. I don't know if she was pregnant. Some lady from Congo just hit her so high, so hard, and then she just throw her, and then she keep hitting her head on the ground just because of the water. So I couldn't stand looking at my aunt beating up like that. And when I just took that lady, I was like 11 or 10, so I just took that lady and I threw her away. And I said, why are you hitting my aunt? I just... And then she slapped me and then I slapped her so hard and then, I don't know, I just pushed her she fell somewhere. And then the kidney but this kid, they took us to the, to the jail. Mm-hmm. So we went there and then they said, why you, you fight? I said, she pushed my aunt and then there were two of them, they hitting her and, and I see her bleeding. I cannot just stand. She survived from a long way to come and then she kept hitting her. I just kind of stand. I, I was the only witness mm-hmm. in there. And I messed it up. So, and then we went to the jail, they put us in jail for like two days. Mm. They didn't give us no water or anything. And then this lady, I don't know what she did, she gave them money and they let her go and then we were just waiting there for the UN people to come. I mean, the, the international people to come, but they wasn't there. They were, some of them was in their way, some of them were here, some of them, I don't know where they were. So, we have to pay to get out with it, so we don't have money to pay. So we just spent like a week that we just out, we were out, they let us go. Mm-hmm. And then again, the water, you have to put, you stay in line for three until in the morning at seven, the water to be open. They came on time. Some, the box coming through the water, but you have to, you don't see the box. You don't get about that, you just need water to drink. Mm-hmm. Then you get water to fight to drink. If you want to go to get food, we have, we have car. It's kind of like first of us, it's kind of great. So the line is they give you by the name, but you have to start the line to people pushing, they're freezing you, you fell. You get up or not get up, just step on you, they don't care. They're going. And that place, the food they give you is like a jail place. And that, the Kenyan people, uh, they look like, I don't know, the, the country people, they call them Turkana. I don't know if you hear this name. Mm-hmm. They, they like, if you look at them, they're hitting you. Mm-hmm. They're gonna like twist your head. So you, because you, they walk naked, you kind of look at them. That's their country, but they walk naked and they eat donkeys and everything. You gotta just look at them. If you look at them, they just twist your head. <coughs> And you cannot smile at them or anything, you just have to just be a mouse and look away. 
But when the, the food time comes, like in a month, it's once only. They come and they help, and they you have to pay them, or you just have there's no money to pay them. You just give them some of your food so they can carry all the stuff with their head and come. But once you can afford, you have to carry by yourself and go home. Uh, you know, people still people still from um, people they just hit you for no reason. Sometimes they just waiting for you to get out and fight with you. So the market is too far. I have to go to the market. I have to go to market to shop with like to take like some food of the you want to give us to just a switch or buy get some very very just like penny or one dollar to get some food at the bed you can afford the bed so what happened the rain is coming they have a very long river when the rain coming the like the people just gone you can you're not gonna get out so I don't know. Several times I I just kept that place. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. I came with the water is just coming through my nose. I'm just like getting. I'm just trying to get it out. I get. Out, I used to go home and cook and clean and everything. But when how are you gonna cook when the water's everywhere? Mm -hmm. The fire you cannot catch the fire because the water's everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait for for the water to go and everything to get dry. And then. Yeah, when you you put the beans on the fire, you try and they're gonna get cooked. All the, the rocks they got inside the the food because the wind. You you oh, you have to eat because you have no choice. It's a food you get it. You have to eat it with the sun and everything with the rocks and with the wood piece of the wood. You just have to eat or you just have to you find a way you have to take it out of your food. So, so, so how long were you in Kenya? For six months and a half. Six months, yeah. Yes. And then the international people, they came, they, they said, oh gosh, you go to the United States. Okay, we went to the United States. Where we went to France, we spent like a week. France was cold, very cold. They gave us the clothes, we changed and everything. Uh, we went to France and we saw people wearing really good, but we just wore it like we just, you know, refugees. Some people smiling at us, some people they give us food, some people they, I went to like, some guy from the front, he called me, he buy me some candy, with a big cane, he buy candy for us. So we stayed there waiting for some people to come to get us to hotels or I don't know where. So we went there, we spent like a week, so then we told them they're gonna take us to the stair or somewhere safer, we don't know, but France is safe, but they tell us we're gonna stay in the front. So they said, okay, we went to the United States. They took us to East Africa, we went to Bali. And when I was riding an airplane, I stood down there. This is not an United States. This is just, you know? And I said, I just cry. I see all the graves again. I thought we just went back home. And I said, I just saw graves and the place all desert or red. And we cannot just go back here. And that guy he looked back, he said, No, you're not going there. I said, you know, I don't trust people who have second talks. I just spoke in my language but there's somebody who is speaking my language so he has to like translate. No. I he asked her what she said, he said he's like, No, nothing, she didn't say anything. So they went they took us to Burkina Faso. We spent one year in Burkina Faso. I mean Life was good. They give us body gardens too. One is outside, one is inside. We have to stay in the hotel. What well, I think is a house. It must look like a hotel. It has uh, like 50 rooms. We're only like three families. Us and other families and other home from tribe called Masali. We were there. But when I was to go out, no education, nothing. We have water and food and everything. But we spent there like an year. Life was very boring. There was no no people to communicate with. Oh, and there was just people you, you met from different areas of Darfur, which is they're not your relative. But yeah, we been there. Even the holidays can we know it's a holiday, but you cannot celebrate it because there's not enough people, and you cannot go out to chill, or you just have to stay inside it like a prisoner. Yeah, they give you money, they give you clothes, they give you food and everything, but it just feel like a prison. You don't bring you can't go out. Even if you go out the bodyguard, he has to go with you. What people think they gonna they're gonna start thinking about 
who is she, who they are. So, or, so we spent a year with pretty boy. So my dad started fighting back. He say, I cannot live here. My kid, they grow it up and there's no education and everything. And God, you said you take us to another state and everything. And then, like a few months they come, they brought a book in Arabic, which my father or Israel, we can read Arabic because we didn't go to school. So they show us the flag of the United States. And they show us the the people that say the houses and the apartments, everything, and the liberty, the state. They show us that one, and if you hope people gonna welcome it. Oh, we thought they gonna take us to the United States immediately, but they lie to us again. They just coming home. They give you like French money, like one thousand for your person. They give you everything what you want. They give you, but you just like a prisoner over there because they just. They say you have to stay inside, it's not safe for you to go out because the militia is still charging for us. I mean, that was true. But we like to go see outside what is in the new country, we need to know about it. And then they they just say, okay, wait, they give us another six months. We, we spend another six months and then the holiday camp. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go out to pray, or you don't know what to do. just sit there and just keep thinking. Then they say, like in the in the Gaga, we some of them say, what if with the Gaga we're gonna be dancing, we're gonna be doing this, and some of them just cry. I mean, the life is better, but just it's not just enjoyment, or it's just not happy life or everything, because you just feel like you're in jail. So they. They came, they took other family, they brought him to the United States in the Washington Seattle with his family. They gave us another week. We have to wait because some lady was pregnant. We have to wait six months. I mean that's not our fault because she was pregnant. Why we have to wait? I mean we were the first people who took us there but we just they just keep us so we have to wait until that lady give birth, we waited for her. And then my dad said, I'm not gonna wait for them to go and then stay here because I'm the one who came first before them. So they took us. We went to, we came to the United States, finally. It was when, when, Friday. When was that? What year? 2010. 2010. 2010 was March 4th. It hmm. was Friday night. Hmm. We came to the United States and when we see everything was so beautiful. And the light, and the light was just different where it come from. It was just like a light, I felt like it was heaven to me. But we went to the airport and then we waited. They, uh, the the YMC people, they didn't come there. So we just get, I don't even know how to get our luggage. It was, the, the thing was just going around and around, people waiting there. I don't know how to get them. And then some people, they put it down, so when they get them, when they we waited, we just some uh, chairs, we wait there, like for long hours. And, and then we don't know where to go. My dad said, go make a phone call. I said, how am I going to make a phone call? Because I don't know anything about this country. I don't know who to ask. I'm going to go ask the stranger. He said, go try. I said, what try what? I'm going to speak for them. He said, I don't know, go talk with your hands. I said, let me try. I was going around. I was just scared of the alligators. I don't know how to go, they go up and down. I was like so scared. <laughs> and then like, I found somebody. He said, are you lost? I don't understand. I said, I just talk with my hands like a body language. And then he said, where you come from? He's like, he just said, where you come from? I said, I'm from Darfur. And so, oh, they waiting for the NC, uh, YMC? I don't know what the YMC. Well, I don't really know what's YMC, because even if they tell me, right now I do, but back then I didn't know. And then we waited for a long time. It was really nice, and then the YMC guy, he came, he put it inside the car, and he said, I'm sorry, he spoke Arabic because my dad was speaking Arabic. He was saying sorry and everything. My dad said, you said sorry for what? My kid was hungry, thirsty, and he just waited. He said, sorry, this country is so big and everything. He was planning everything. My dad says, okay. They took us to the Christianok. I asked for Christianok. That was the first apartment we came from. So, it was Friday night, it was 4 o'clock Friday, it was uh, March 4th, 2010. 
So we just get they give us the apartment, and then you know they give us you know the bed. So you know yeah, it's a bed, but it's better than you know where we come from. We slept there. They put chicken in the cooler, chicken and fruit and everything. It was Turkey I should like chicken. So mm -hmm. we ate it. I mean, it's not tasteful, but we ate it. It was better for us, you know. Or they would say we feel like we're in a restaurant heavy. No, we just said they they put him in the middle school, jello. So I went to the middle school. We came in March, the summer was on May. So they put me in in uh seventh grade. I don't know what to do because that was the test this time. They gave me a test, I have no idea what I don't even know what is A B C I don't even know what is one to three. And then the teacher keep talking with the hands and everything. I don't, I don't know what she's talking about. I just have to be in the class. That's all I know. I go to cafeteria. I'm very shy. The way I wear my clothes, I wasn't no, wearing a scarf. But I just wear what what times I don't want to. I was just standing beside the the the, the cafeteria table, instead of people. I was like very shy. I can't even eat. I don't know. What, I would just be on my brothers. My two brothers, mm -hmm. the other one, he was sixth grade, one was fifth grade. So, so I was just very shy, I couldn't go start the line to get food and everything. I was like, everything was, everyone was just very cool and like talking and everything. I don't know what to say. This is just so much to pick it up. So what happened, they give, uh, they brought a computer for the test, you know, tasks. And I don't know what stuff, and somebody said, this is this. Somebody spoke to me in Arabic. I did not speak Arabic, but I learned it, though. I didn't speak it, though. They said this, they have, for like, A, B, C. You have to click, the dot has it gone. I said, what is this? This is a test. I passed it, and I don't know. I did it, but I don't know what was that. I don't know how to read the sentence or the question, what, they, what it was saying. I passed it. And then I passed my classes. They say I was a uh, B and A plus, uh, uh, A and B plus student. <laughs> they like welcome me in the uh, auditorium. and they they call my dad. They even took a picture of me. I said, "What is this?" I don't know. After after in in a, it was April when I was in the middle school. In the May, they put me in high school. Mm. Uh, high school. I, I even skipped the grade though, I guess. I was put me in high school. It was summer, I went to summer in high school. The bullies start. People talk to me, Spanish, which I don't even know what's Spanish. Uh, they talk English, I don't know. So only what I have to do, hide behind the doors. It was, I don't feel here like a welcome. I you know people go sit down, they call my name, I only know authorized whether they say, say yes or no if you're here or not or absent. I don't have to say it because I was very shy to speak or make eye contact. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. And I was scared of the, the, the other students. Because I don't know what to say to them if they talk to me. And all I know was about the war. I don't know everything about the war. Mm -hmm. So I spent a freshman year. It was very hard for me. I don't know how to write an essay. I don't know how to read anything. I didn't want to do the math. It was just pretty hard. Well, the end of the semester, they gave me a schedule to say I passed my classes. Uh, I didn't pass. My teacher was Mr. Ray. He's still there. He helped me read my uh, how to read, how to write an essay, and everything. And then I was the top of the class. Every time I write an essay, every time I do the test, I was just like there, getting my getting a ninety-five, not less than ninety-five or hundred. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why I'm doing this because it's still I'm not understanding. Yeah, some of them, the easy words they come, but the big words they come. Mm -hmm. So I passed my house, I went to the uh, software. The I started doing a cross country. I started doing cross country when I was freshman. Mm -hmm. But first, I don't know, they did the coast town, I would run because they just come from Africa. A run, I come fifth, uh, fifth place. They give me the reward. And then the coach was talking English, push your heart, pick your tongue out to run away and everything. 
I don't know what he would say, but the coach have to put it out so I can see, so I have to copy what he's doing. It. And then when I was I go home, I have to cook, I have to study, which I don't know how to read. <laughs> Everything <laughs> was very hard. And in the morning, you have to go find a bus, the school bus. I was very scared to cross the street because <laughs> I thought. I don't know nothing about the lights though. They're green or mm. yellow or red. I have just to wait. So I thought if I went to the castle, they're gonna just cross me because it's, uh, they, don't care. they don't respect you, I'm sure. So this, I make a new friend, they help me, we have to walk. It's still, until I come junior, uh, if I saw the streets is empty, I have to run. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't, I have to ride to school, but I go to school, I go to sport, I come. So I still learning English little by little. Then start like telling my story. It was my junior year when I put my essay on the uh, uh, HID people came there, like talk to me, like they do. It was a lot of things I show what they did, and then I wrote my I say and then they wrote it when I told them for the video and then they put it on the website the the HID face news. And then little by little still I'm a senior senior you have to buy still or um, I cannot afford it because you know nobody's working with my dad, he's not able to work because of his back issues. And my mom he she cannot work because her feet that her hurt was just well as when she started until today. So I just give up my senior year like this uh, from or really whatever thing I give it up because I have family there to care about them. I to go go to school have eight classes. Every eight class they have their own homework and their own tests to take. Well I don't have to have to study. When I come home I have to cook, give a bath to my brothers or you know, or just clean a home or baby and everything. And then in the morning, take a rest, go to school. You have to get up from six to go catch the bus. It was like time change, so you have to get up early. Well, after that, I met him. So I fell in love. <laughs> and then I, everything changed you now. I said his wedding, I was engaged when I was here. And I, was, I was engaged to him, it was March 2013, March 15. And then my mom say, oh, you have to go to your home now. And then we make a wedding on June, June 22nd, 2013, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to my home and then I still, I was senior, I go to school. And then I was doing, still doing cross country and track. I was pregnant with her like four months back. I have no idea. I was just going through cross country. I, get, I came number five. And I don't know why did I came number four because I never came number four. That was too late for me. I have no idea that I'm pregnant or everything. And then I went to the truck with him and then I came number six. They still give it a bottle to. I don't say why did they come number five? It's just too mild. I my body just heavy, but I was just flat, everything. I don't know if it's pregnant, I'm sure. And then here I discovered I went to the school, Lee High School, they have a nurse and so I wanna take the pregnancy, so they really was positive. You know, then I become about everything changed, but it's still the work is hunting me down. I sometimes I sleep, I just see myself in action. And I say, I, just, I can't forget about it. It's stuck with me. Yeah. You, you, you talked about having the chance to tell your story. What has it been like to be able to tell your story? Well, I feel much better. Uh, it's just I just want to do something to help to people who live behind the war, because which I know they're still, they're still suffering and they don't have a better home. And I want to bring my home back, no matter what. Well, yes, that's the most important thing. I'm living here, eating healthy, and, you know, like living heaven today, but I want to bring my home back. That's the most important to me. Yeah. Even though if I'm the woman, I, I'm not that well educated, I'm just in car right now, but I will do anything to bring my home back. It's important. Yeah. Or people to go back where they were. Because Kev is terrible. Well, it's better now, but it's terrible. 
Yeah. Well, um, Nathan Roberts and Melissa Sloan are also in the room with us, and I know Nate generally has a question. Do you have a question you'd like to ask? Yeah. I do. I've got a couple of questions. Uh, first, thank you so much You're welcome. for being here and for agreeing to in the interview and for sharing your story. Uh, it's so important, and thank you for being here. Um, next, um, I was wondering about friends you made in high school. Friends. Well, I met many friends, many actually. Friends. I met people from Vietnam, China, from Burma, Nepal, Mexico, which I don't even know there was uh, countries. And then I met people from Bhutan, India, North America, and then I met people from, uh, I, even I even met people from the native people, the teachers and everything, and Jamaica, I'm from uh, Cuba, and Venezuela, and people from Brazil. Well, I met a good friends, but then there's another girl came, she was from, uh, she was from Burma, and she didn't speak English. She just, she just draw a hard picture, and then she give it to me, and she writing her language, and she give it to me, and I have no idea. And she just like, everything she want to do, she's telling me, she's talking to her husband. But I was a new student, but she was just brand new. She don't talk to nobody, and she understand me, and I don't understand her, she just like, I'm the, just the person who should talk to me. So, but she moved to a different state, but I met her many friends until today. I still have a high school friends. Yeah. Um, your story is unique. How do you see yourself as different from like, the people you went to high school with? Well, what I see from the difference between them, I come from war. And they didn't come from the war. That's a big difference. And they have everything that they want to have in this life, but I didn't have what what they have. And all my life I was doing to save my life, but with their life, just to joy. So there's a big difference between their life and my life. Can you talk a little bit more about those differences? I mean, how do you how do you, how did you see them, and how? Well, here how you see them. They have like uh, anything they want, like clothes or computer or cell phones, or they have a cars, and they can't even dye their hair or style the way they want it. But my life, it was you have to run to save your life, or you can't even find a food to eat or drink water, or you can't even have a clothes. You can't even see your face. You can't see different between boys and girls. So I think there's a big difference. Big one, yes. Yes. Um, tell us about your daughter. My daughter? Mm -hmm. She's one years old. And so what is her name? She's Renat. Renat. Renat Haddam. What do you want for your daughter? What I want for my daughter, I want her to go to school to finish her education. And then she got to marry or just help people. Like, I don't want her just to sit there and do what people do, like what people do in high school to have fun and everything else. I want her to go to school. After high school, to go to college. College, she can, whatever she do to make her happy. And she don't have to just take any bad advice. She have to follow her own minds. That went on for her. I don't want her to be happy. That's good. That's very good. Uh, one more question. Um, uh, hopefully a lot of people will see this and see your story uh, and and be affected by it like like we've been. Um, what do you want them to know? What I want them to know, they have to know this world is hard, it's not easy. And you have to be thankful for what you have. Because you live in the United States, you're lucky to be one who lives in the United States. When you're out, you will see the horrible. And you you won't even know what is outside of this country, and you don't want to be out there. As long as you live in United States, you have to be the luckiest one, and go to school and do the right thing. Because this life, it's not easy. It's very difficult, and it's gonna be hard. Today it may be better, but tomorrow it won't be hard. It will won't be easier. Because it's a life, and you have to make it up to you. It's the, it's not a choice. You cannot have whatever you want to have. We have this Senate to represent in this life. 
and the date, that is everywhere. You can die when your time is come. Whether you like to die or whether you don't have to die. It's just when the time came, you have no choice. I have learned that because I thought myself maybe I can be dead, but look at me when I'm standing today. I'm here alive and healthy. It's because my time didn't come yet. But when my time came yet, I won't be able to stop or do anything. Because that's the destiny of my life was just close. Thank you. You're, you're very young, but your words, um, they are very, very wise. The word make me that way. <laughs> much older. Thank you. Thank you you're so welcome. much, Nasma, for sharing your story with us. You're welcome.